Okay, so we just saw the structure and operation of the MPN transistor, and uh, we're going to now um, take a look at the structure and operation of its cousin, it, the MPN. All right, so we just saw the structure of operation of the MPN transistor, and now we're going to take a look at the operation and structure of the PMP transistor, the complementary transistor. Uh, it's actually very similar, so we're going to um, go a little faster. And again, we're talking about the operation in the linear active region. That is the one that we're going to um, utilize for amplifiers and uh, small signal amplification purposes. Uh, the PMP transistor is similar in structure to the MPN, except um, with complementary regions. So instead of having uh, an N uh, type collector, P type base, and type emitter, we will have just the opposite a P type emitter, N type base, P type collector, so PMP. Um, the emitter is going to be still heavily doped, the base is going to be lightly doped and narrow for proper operation. And here is our transistor. And um, just like before, I'm going to uh, bias it in the forward um, active region or the linear region. And to do that, I'm going to first thing turn on the emitter base junction. Um, this will be easy. The way I turn on the junction in this case, emitter base junction, is I set my VEB approximately equal to 0.7 volts. And notice that in this case, I'm talking about VEB instead of VBE. Notice that the polarities um, are, are transposed with respect to the MPN transistor. So we will say the base emitter junction or VVE in this case will be equal to negative 0.7 volts, or we can say VEB is equal to positive 0.7 volts. I typically choose to uh, transpose the, the subscripts so that I can still keep uh, my numbers positive. And then we have VEC being greater than around 0.3 volts in order to keep the transistor out of saturation. So same conditions as with the MPN, as we can see above, except the subscripts have now been uh, transposed. All right, now once I have my transistor in the linear active region, uh, similar things are going to happen as with the MPN. I have a forward bias emitter base junction, and so I'm going to have um, an excess uh, holes or a, a large number of holes in the emitter. Uh, which are going to want to diffuse into the base due to the normal operation of a forward bias PN junction. So let's go ahead and pick uh, my holes now. A few of them are going to recombine with available free electrons in the base, but because the base is uh, narrow and lightly doped, there's going to be very little recombination most of those holes are going to be collected by the collector. And so this is the representation of um, what's going on. A few of them recombine at the base, and then we have uh, the electrons uh, from the base, a few of them recombining, a few of them moving into the emitter. This will be our electron current in this case, and this represents our whole current. And I can write the symbol for my PMP transistor. This will be the emitter. Collector and base. Now notice that uh, with the circuit symbol, the emitter is always marked with an arrow, um, the emitter terminal. 
And so um, the direction of the arrow is the one that will indicate whether it's a, a we're dealing with an MPN or a PNP transistor. In the MPN, the arrow is pointing um, outwards because the current is flowing out of the emitter. Um, and in the PNP transistor, the arrow is pointing into the device because the current is flowing into the uh, PNP transistor. And so this will be our IE, IC, collector current, and base current. Notice that, again, in the PNP transistor, now the currents have reversed polarity. The current is entering the emitter and leaving both the base and the collector terminals. Again, I can write KCL, and it's the same thing. Current centered in the device must equal to the amount of current leaving the device. And so, in this case, current centering is IE. Current leaving is the sum of IB plus IC, just like before. And just like before, the collector current is much, much larger than uh, the base current. The ratio is still beta. It's approximately in the range of 100 to 300, so 100 times larger, uh, the collector current and the base current. And so we can make the approximation that the collector current uh, is approximately equal to the emitter current. Um, likewise, we are going to be using the same um, expression for the power dissipated in the transistor as before. Except notice that, again, the voltages have reversed polarity. And so the power dissipated in the transistor is going to be now IB times VEB plus IC times VEC. And we're going to approximate it as IC times VEC for the same reason as before. That term is going to be much larger uh, than the base current term because both the collector current and the um, emitter collector voltage are going to be greater than um, the emitter base voltage and the base current. So that summarizes the operation and structure of the bipolar junction transistor, the PMP in this case, in the linear active region of operation.